This playthrough is rated M for Mature. Greetings and salutation viewers of all of my back here with another episode of Dark Souls. In the last episode, we defeated the nasty Calamy Dragon in one, in one fell swoop, and we decided to clear out the land of Ulysses of those who would uh, talk about my talk about uh, fictitious glory. And so I start down, go, Kaelin, and marvelous Chester to grab their outfits. Hooray! Anyway, let's continue with the story. Now that we've finished all that, now time to basically just kind of clean up like little bits and details about the game before we finally finish it. So let's finish a couple side stories. Now there is one side story I might have accidentally canceled by accident by killing all the bosses. So if I can't get this, I do apologize. I'll try to describe the story as best I can because I just remembered it. After going through the whole game, I'm like, oh, there's one character I haven't met. Uh, ran across yet, and I'm like, oh, I think I already prevent that from being possibly too... Well, anyway, let's uh, finish Greg's storyline, oh, shall hello. we? Terrific to see us both in one piece. Incidentally, would you care to learn any sorceries? You see, Master Logan has left most of his books. With them, I could teach you Logan sorcery. You're clearly talented, and besides, I owe you. Before I leave on this journey, I will teach you all that Logan has to share. Now, if you want, uh, if you want Griggs to teach you how to do sorcery, you need intelligence of ten. So I used one soul level to get to intelligence ten. I was so close, but anyway, yes, teach me sorcery. Splendid, very well. I am pleased to have a chance to give something back. Well then, let's get started straight away. But anyway, if you want to finish this storyline, buy all the stuff he currently has. So, <gasps> Master Logan is at the archives. Thank the heavens. Finally, his wish has been granted. I suppose he has his head buried in those tomes. That's always what made Master Logan happiest. Oh, I can just imagine him now. Well, nice to see that your respect for him goes ever so deep. Two things are required for sorcery. First, you must equip a wand. Second, you must attune a sorcery. Then you will be ready to fire away. Oh, and don't forget to aim. We can't already know how to do that. Two things. Okay, so Set anyway, to finish his story oh, out, uh, we just need to buy the rest of his equipment. So buy, if you have the money, buy it all. So I should have enough souls to buy everything. Magic weapon, homing soul mass, aura decoy, magic shield, even though we don't use any of these throughout the whole game. I need to buy his rings too. Um, oh well, I guess it's about time I finally use all those extra souls I've got because I, d I decided not to grind off screen for them so what I'm gonna do is right. I'm just gonna get that'll do it that should help you on your journey may we meet again all right I'm gonna get 40,000 souls to buy the rings off him so give me just a second and I'll be right back after I've uh, gotten those souls so see you all in a second all right we're back after using a bunch of souls I knew holding hoarding on to all those was gonna be important oh, hello. but now that you've located master Logan I can't imagine that I can be of much help Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to skip that. I thought he was going to repeat himself. Two things. Okay, now he repeats himself. Oh. Sorry. Now let's buy those rings from him, since we've bought in all the spells. The Bellowing Dragon Crest Ring, which boosts your spell strength. A special ring granted to only the most accomplished sorcerer at the Venheim Dragon School. The ring is engraved with an everlasting dragon and boosts the strength of sorceries. Okay, let's buy that. And the Lingering Dragon Crest Ring. A special ring granted to only those... Let's see. Uh, the ring is graved with the Lingering Dragon boosts this effect of sorcery. Basically how long they last. So if you use, like, magic shield, magic weapon, stuff like that. So, anyway. I have decided to seek the Regal Archives. I realize that I may never make it. But I would feel worthless if I did not at least try. What other choice do I have to earn Logan's recognition? All right, well, now that's the end of his story, so now we'll encounter him later on, which I'll show you here in a second, so... All right, that'll do it. That should help you on your journey. May we meet again. No, uh, we will. At least one more time. All right, now let's talk to the Pyromancer. Uh, Patches really has nothing else left to say as far as I know. Uh, Petrov didn't have anything to say, and there's no reason to kill either one of them because they don't add anything to... They don't have any, like... Uni drops and stuff like that. But anyway, let's talk to our pyromancy friend. Oh, hello there. You've been a stranger these days. Why? What? What, what spectacular pyromancy? Tell me about it. I, I, I have never seen anything like it. If you if you want to still have him sell you stuff and you don't care about finishing a storyline, say no to this answer. And you get this response from him from either buying from a lady called. Quetrand or Quetranus or Quetrana of the Swamp, which I that that's the character I might have missed. 
Uh, or from a Rengi by getting the uh, fermented egg, or getting the egg head, head thing, uh, will allow you to buy unique pyromancies that he's like. Or if you get uh, rank 2 of the Chaos Servant, you get those unique pyromancies from her. Anyway, that causes him to ask this question, but since we want to finish the storyline, I've bought everything from, I want to say I know where I found that stuff. Why, yes, of course. Thank you for sharing. I'm still an able pyromancer. I shall locate him myself. I'm in your debt once again. This finishes his storyline, so if you need to uh, modify your equipment, your pyromancy, as long as you haven't killed a Rangi or pissed him off, you should still be able to do it there. Uh, but uh, we're good for him, so his storyline's pretty much over. Pyromancer's flame is, is a part of. I think flame. I've already well, talked to him at that part, so he's good. So his storyline's complete. No, you dare go all day. So we'll we'll find out what happens to him here in a moment. Um, I think after that is time to let's do some combat before we uh, before we uh, finish these other storylines. So I'm gonna I'm gonna travel to the actually I could probably do it now. I think I think there was a warp spot to uh, to the red dragon, wasn't there? Let's see, it's supposed to be right next to the. Uh, um, if not, I'll just I'll just uh, cut to when I'm back there. Uh, Hmm, I could have swore there was a quick warp to the, uh... It's not the depths, it's not the undead parish. Uh, oh, let's see, Chasm of Abyss? Nope. The Stone Dragon Altar, no. The Chamber of Death. Sunlight Altar. Is that, is that the one we want to go to? Yeah, I think so. That's the one with the, uh... That's the one where Solaire, that's the Solaire one where he, uh, where he, the, that's where you get the Sunlight Warrior, isn't it? Because we still need to fight that Red Dragon we fought so long ago. Now, I'm probably way over leveled for the, uh, for the Red Dragon now, now that we're at this point in the game. Uh, but, because I think you can fight him at, like, level 50 or something like that. Like, soul level 50 is probably when you're probably about supposed to come back and try to kill him. Uh, well, the reasoning I see behind that is it's basically you're supposed to try and fight him after you do Anorlando, because then Solaire pops up here after you go to Anorlando and deal with the two guards. So that's probably, and you're supposed to be about soul level 50 by the time you get there, so that's probably when you're supposed to try and tackle the uh, dragon finally. So to get the dragon, you basically need to, uh, um, okay, so we need decent armor. Everything should be good, and we got fire protection if he blasts us, but we basically need to get him to reset and come back here. So the only way I see about doing that is basically just, if I remember, you basically just have to run, kind of run across the bridge and uh, and try to get him to respawn again, if you can. Let's see if we can get him to do it. Uh, but anyway, we're gonna finally kill this guy after all these years, or after all these, you know, weeks of, uh, of ignoring him and uh, uh, running away from him the first time. And, I, and it was, I think it was one of my first deaths actually was from him, which shouldn't have even occurred because I should have healed, and that, I, I don't know if anyone ever mentioned it, but I should have healed myself when I, uh, when I ran across, when I, when I got hid behind the, the wall there, but, uh, anyway. Yeah, I remember the times of Soul Air there, huh? I think there is one sp uh, there is a spot we can run into Soul Air again somewhere that I might have accidentally skipped. I'll see if I can remember to locate it. It's near where the Chaos Lady is. Uh, if I can't get him to spawn soon, I'll try to do it off screen. Because he will respawn if you run, kind of run back and forth between this area. He's supposed to, anyway. Hmm. Well, okay. Uh, give me a second, folks. I'll see if I can try to get that uh, red dragon to respawn. So uh, I'll see you all in just a second. Well, I tried and tried to get the, the red dragon to spawn, but for whatever reason, I couldn't get him to do it. So I do kind of apologize. Basically, the fight... It's just like a weaker version of Calamite. Well, okay, it's actually not exactly like Calamite at all. The Hellkite Dragon basically uh, firebombs the bridge, tries to fireball, you, uh, fire throw you from like one side to the next. Uh, basically, you want to get up close next to him. Range is kind of a bad deal. He heals slightly after when he hits 25%. Um, I could easily beat him, but I for some reason I can't get him to spawn anymore. Maybe I glitched him or something like that. So I do apologize. So. Uh, let's continue with the next part of uh, the like cleaning out the uh, the story. Uh, basically, we want to go to Sin's fortress and we want to find out what happened to Grig on a, on his way to finding his master. So let's uh, go ahead and follow him there. Now, basically, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to explore through Sin's fortress till about halfway through. When you get past like the rolling boulders part, uh, is when you encounter Grig. So I'll uh, cut to when I explore through Sin's fortress to when I finally uh, locate uh, Griggs and I'll uh, record when I finally locate him so I'll see you all in just a second.
All right, we're back in Sense Fortress about halfway through. Uh, there is a, uh, like when you try to dodge the uh, the boulders. But anyway, before we notice a new uh, encounter in this area here, well, here it is, Silent Old Griggs. So if he hadn't cast his spells, I probably wouldn't have noticed he was there at all. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, Griggs becomes aggressive and hollified as he uh, as he uh, enter tries to enter Sense Fortress, basically giving up all hope ye who enters. Yeah, he's actually not too difficult, easy to kill, but, uh, yep, that's the end of Griggs. He became holified, and we get, uh, Hush, Humanity, and a Slimmery Dragon Crest Ring. Funny how you have to buy his ring to get another ring, so we have two of them now, but, uh, oh well. Oh, actually, well, actually, maybe this one's slightly different. I'm trying to remember. Uh, let me see. No, we already had that. I bought that. I forgot who I bought that from now that I think about it. Never mind. That's a different rank. So, yeah, that's what happened to Grig. So, uh, all right. Let's go to the next. Uh, did I? All right. No, I don't. Okay. Let's go to the next encounter. Uh, I think we should finally finish that Covenant of the Dark Moon, shall we, while we're here. So, uh, let's uh, take care of that. That one's a warp point, so that one will be easy to get to. So, no problem there. Um... Yeah, we've kind of skipped over this a little while just because I haven't gotten all the, um, I didn't have all the souls of reprisal to, uh, to, uh, to max, or to get to rank two, which, yeah, rank two is what I need for, uh, for, um, to maximize the rank of what I, of what I want to get out of that covenant. Soul reprisals can begin by wearing the, using the blue orb or wearing the ring of the Dark Moon to be summoned to those who are found guilty, or you can grind that for them for those crow demons inside the Painted World. But now that we have ten of them, which I grinded for off-screen already, we can uh, get to max level. So let's uh, go ahead and do that, shall we? Welcome back, well, not max Blade level. of the Dark Moon. If mine power be needs, I shall assist thee. All right, let's go ahead and join it again, because I think I joined it before, if I remember correctly, but I didn't have the uh, ten souls of reprisal, so I wasn't able to get to the second rank, so... Very well. Now thou art a blade of the dark moon, hunteth the enemies of the lords by the power of the dark sun. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to get to rank ten, so I need to use ten souls of reprisal to get to rank ten before we max it out. So I'm going to do that off screen, and I'll be right back after I've gotten the second rank, and then we'll continue with this little little story here. So I'll see you all in a second. All right, we've went for reaching rank two of the uh, Dark Moon Covenant. We get the Dark Moon Blade and the Dark Moon Talisman. Uh, the Dark... Oops. Nope, I don't want to do that because I don't need to do that anymore. And I don't, I don't mind getting kicked out of it, which is what I'm going to do here in a second. Let's read the Dark Moon Blade. It is a miracle, which basically when you use it, you attack with the blade right, right in front of you. Uh, it gets more powerful if you reach the final rank of, of Dark Moon, which I think requires 60... Souvenirs of Reprisal, I think, if I remember correctly. But anyway, Miracle granted to those bound by covenant to Gwendolyn, Lord of Gwyn's lastborn. Boost right weapon with rays of Dark Moon. The power of the rays of the Dark Moon manifested in vengeance, and the deeper the animus, the more devastating the attack. So, and then we got the Dark Moon um, uh, Miracle, or not Miracle, the uh, little uh, Talisman. So I'll show you that really quick. Uh, talisman, do, do, do. here we go. Medium for casting miracles of the gods, granted to Dark Moon Blade Knights, adherent to the covenant of the Dark Sun Gwendolyn. This talisman demands dutiful faithful uh, faith from its owner, but is very high miracle adjustment. Um, if it's, n I don't, I think it's actually the best miracle. Oh wait, no, I think uh, there's one other miracle that's slightly better than the Dark Moon Talisman, if I remember correctly, um, that you can get. But Dark Moon's pretty solid. Like it's one of the best ones in the game to get. So. If you're doing uh, miracles, this is definitely one of the ones to to get. Uh, but uh, all right, well, you know we we heard about how how Gwendolyn created this like fake like Princess Guinevere to like give us our quest and everything like that. Well, I don't trust him too much. I want to see what this Gwendolyn looks like. It's time to encounter him now. If you go through this thing, you basically immediate you basically cannot raise any more in the Covenant, and you immediately make Gwendolyn your enemy. Which this could happen if you. Also destroy the uh, um, the um, um, 
the the illusion he has as well, which I might do that before I finish the game as well, because finishing the game basically resets everything. But let's fight Gwendolyn. Now there is a cheap way to do this fight if you know what you're doing. If you equipped a decent longbow and let's see, I have decent magic all around, so I should be fine. But I'll want to switch to that before. You might even think about getting the the hawk ring as well. Yeah, the hawk ring. But uh, equipped a magic defense ring for this and get some decent magic defense armor because that's what uh, uh, that's what Gwendolyn uh, uses now for this fight we want to use uh, we want to use poison arrows you'll see why here in a second now this is for those who have trouble with Gwendolyn at my levels I shouldn't have trouble but I want to show you how for those that may be weak levels or having trouble fighting Gwendolyn can fight him so uh, let's let's go let's see what this liar has to tell us What foolishness. Why would a blade of the dark moon trespasseth upon the great lord's tomb? Mark the words of mine self, Gwyndolin. Thou shalt not go unpunished. His dialogue is slightly different if you're not a Dark Moon. Like, he's like, what are you doing here? All right, so Gwendolyn will shoot, like, basically laser beams and teleport far down the thing. Now, basically, the fight, you're supposed to basically chase after him and maybe smack him once or twice. He teleports and keeps going down this infinite hallway till either you die or he dies. Now, if I can hit him correctly, let's, let's quit the Hawk Ring just in case. Alright, so we want to have our poison rings, our poison arrows equipped, and we want to... Let's see if this is far enough. I might need to get a slightly bit closer. Let's find out here in a second. Now a bit too... I might need to get a bit closer. Now a bit... Let's see. Luckily I bought like a ton of arrows before I did this. Hmm. Yeah, I might need to get slightly closer. That should be fine right there. Anyway, the thing is, is for Glendon's fight, like I said, it's actually not too difficult as, as long as you have decent magic protection. But, uh, I want to activate the poison. Basically, one way to beat this, beat Gwendolyn, is to basically poison him to death. Yeah, I, okay. You can tell I saw the, uh, blood stain there when I should be able to. I think it takes, like, five arrows, like, in quick succession to poison him. You can barely tell, but if you look in the lower right screen of his health bar, you see his health is going down very slowly, but he can get poisoned. See? It's slowly uh, jolting down his life bar. Obviously, I'm not going to do this for the whole fight, but I wanted to know, wanted to, to let you know that Gwendolyn can be poisoned, and that's one way to beat him. It's just poison his ass and just let the poison do its work. You can also, if I, if, I think I forgot to say this, but you can also do this to sift the wolf. If you lose to Sith the Wolf, his body will basically be there finally on the map. Because before you activate Sif at the Tomb of Artorias, Sif isn't actually there. But when you activate him and get killed, he walks around. Or not walks around, but he's there now. There's actually a way to get to a hole next to the door, next to the fog door. And he actually shoot, can shoot poison arrows at Sif and kill him that way too. So it's kind of funny that there's a couple bosses in these games that can be killed by, by poisoning. But anyway, uh, we don't want to do that because that'll take way too long. So I'm going to fight uh, Gwendolyn the effective, or the, the fight you're supposed to. Basically you need to like kind of run back and forth because he's going to shoot like big old beams of, of magic at you, see, like that. So you just have to kind of be careful. And uh, you also kind of want to yeah, you have to be kind of careful, because he will blast you with magic. So, And he also has his arrows, too. So just kind of be careful. Really, the most dangerous one is his um, is that is those homing missiles of his. I almost killed him in one shot. <laughs> or one go. Dang. All right. Anyway, and we just keep doing that, basically. That's pretty much how the fight goes. So, um... So, yeah, you kind of want to just kind of zigzag. That's probably the best strategy, so you don't get, like, completely murdered. All right. See, so, I should be able to get him. Yeah, he's dead. That was easy. All hectic, swathed in dark, an eternal curse upon thee.
Which in game terms means he didn't do anything to me. But anyway, we get the soul of Gwendolyn for killing him. Yay for murder. Although they were trying to, uh, they were trying to, um, to uh, alter my path. I I choose how I go. But anyway, soul of Dark Moon Gwendolyn, god of the dark sun and guardian of deserted Anor Orlando. Special beings of special souls. Oh yeah, we can turn Gwyn Gwyn soul into two different types of items. Either I think a it's a bow and I think a staff, or is it another miracle? Something like that. But anyway, now that uh, Gwendolyn's dead, we can now explore the end of this thing, which is apparently, according to Gwendolyn, supposed to be the tomb of Lord Gwyn, or at least a representation of it, but we don't see anything else here. So it's more like a, a shrine more than anything else. But uh, All right, nothing here, so we can take that. Which is nothing. Good. Great, thanks, game. All right, so there's nothing there, but... Uh, but there is something here. We get the Miracle Sunlight Blade. Uh, this is... I think this is a sword ability as well. Miracle will, wielded by Lord Wind's Firstborn. Boosts right hand with rays of the sun. The power of sunlight manifested as lightning is very effective against dragons. When the eldest son was stripped of his deific status, he left his own on his father's coffin, perhaps as a final farewell. Oh, by the way, we won't learn about what happens to uh, to Gwyn's first son until... Uh, until um, uh, the first, uh, until Dark Souls 3, weirdly enough. Alright, and we get the brass armor. That's the armor that that one lady was wearing, uh, that, uh, said she also worshipped, uh, Lord Gwyn. So let's, uh, check it out really quick. Let's see? Man, I'm just getting all these types of armors and stuff like that. Let's see, brass, the brass armor is not too bad either, uh, for medium wear. I, I still think the Elite set's the best in the game because of the, how it upgrades, but, uh, okay, where is it? Come on. It's here somewhere. I might change my outfits by the end of the game, although it's kind of hard doing that just because I've already maxed out all those, all these items and everything. Okay, they're all pretty much the same. Okay, after becoming undead, she visited the, oh, see, Helm of Dark Moon Nightess, Firekeeper of Ainer Londo, even though we haven't actually killed her, but it says that anyway. After becoming undead, she visited the Dark Sun Gwendolyn at the Mausoleum of the Spiral Depths, became a Blade of the Dark Moon, and assumed the flame, keeping duty. She received this helm, which hides her hideous form and helps her hunt the guilty and the uh, the rest of the items are slightly different but anyway so wait a minute if we killed Gwendolyn and she was uh the brass knight was uh, his uh was his like uh, loyal servant i wonder what happens if we go talk to her let's uh, warp to that point and see what happened by the way if you uh, kill Gwendolyn you basically cut off a warp point for the rest of the game by the way so uh be prepared to do that but uh well we've already done it no no I'm going back now so uh, and I think I'm considered guilty now that I've killed him if I could so people could actually hunt me down if they really wanted to. Uh, Alright, see, where was... Was it just Ann Orlando? I think it was just Ann Orlando. But yeah, after we warp here, it'll become not... Uh, uh, it, it'll be basically become not warpable again because of what happens, and you'll find out here in a second. Yeah, just, uh, just, uh, d to, you know, just kind of expect. Yeah, we're getting attacked by her. Yeah, we basically killed her master, so... Yeah. What's she trying to... This... woman is a threat. Master Gwendolyn. Even though I killed Master Gwendolyn. Uh, uh, she says man if you're a man... If you're a male character, by the way. Oh, no, I don't want to... I don't want to like... Well, yeah, after we kill her, we... We, the bonfire becomes unusable now. But we get a firekeeper soul. Hooray. But yeah, now we can uh, now we can upgrade our soul, our flask even more. Uh, I don't even think it... Yeah, it does say something different for her. Soul of the Dark Moon Night Test, firekeeper of Anna Orlando. A firekeeper's soul is a draw for humanity and held within their bosoms below just a thin layer of skin are swarms of humanity that writhe and squirm. Her brass armor serves to dis disguise her ghastly form. Well, there's that. Okay, let's uh, let's go back to Gwyn's fire and uh, or Gwendolyn because that one's still lit up despite us killing killing. Uh, let's see, do I want to finish? Actually, do I want to want to kill her in this episode? Not. No, you know, let's uh, let's do Big Hat Logan's storyline. Let's finish his up while we're here, which means I'll have to. Uh, I don't think there's actually any good war points to uh, to. Uh, yeah, we can go to the Crystal Cave. We can go to the Duke's Archives, which is probably the fastest place to go. I might, I might have to do another quick cut uh, for uh, 
uh, for uh, for this little area because we need to uh, um, we need to, have to we need to do Logan's storyline. Actually, I probably should have done the Anne Orlando fire after buying Big Hat Logan stuff. Okay, we do have a quick. I thought that wasn't warpable for some reason, but anyway, let's talk to Big Hat Logan. We need to buy all of his spells so we can unlock his uh, the end of his storyline as well. Now that Griggs failed to get to him. Hey, Logan, how's it going? You doing all right here by yourself? Oh, hello there. Where have you been? Time is a resource. Let's delve in promptly. Okay. You okay, Logan? You're kind of talking in tongues there. Hmm. Interesting. Well, anyway, let's uh, go ahead and buy up all of Logan's stuff, and that'll basically end his storyline. Uh, you can kind of already tell that basically Logan's going basically going crazy, so let's buy the... Actually, it's probably better just to buy all his stuff, despite already having all of it. That way it'll guarantee that you have a... Uh, Okay, so I need to get some more souls, so we'll, I'll do that off screen really quick. Um, so I need to get uh, 50,000 souls, so that shouldn't take too long. The knowledge here is limitless. I would absorb it, then share it with you. Okay, well, uh, give me just a second, Logan, we'll do that. So hold on while I buy the last of his spells, so give me just a second. All right, that didn't take too long, about a minute, uh, using all these brave souls I haven't used, so let's... Uh, you. Oh, I understand. We are in the midst of a revolution. Okay, let's buy the rest of his stuff, by the way. So, let's buy the soul spear, heavy soul, all that. He should be good to go. Okay, he does that. Let's leave. Come again, anytime you please. For I too learn whilst teaching a student. But we've bought all the spells, so that means uh, Logan will disappear from this spot and appear in one more spot. Now, I don't know how you're supposed to figure this out. Maybe it's because he talked about Seath and his, and his uh, uh, trial, or not trials, but his uh, experiments and stuff like that. Maybe that's supposed to be the clue to figure out where to go, but uh, I'll meet you. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to like leave this area and reset it, and then I'm going to meet you into the last place, the, sec the first place we ever met Seath the Scaleless because that's where he uh, took us out. Basically the place where Seath killed us for the first time. Uh, so I'm going to meet you there for the uh, ending of, uh, of uh, Big Hat Logan's uh, storyline. So I'll see you all in just a second. All right, we're back to where in the... Uh, it's basically if you go to the beginning of the Duke's archives, you can basically um, uh, unlock the elevator. You could probably go to the library uh, warp and uh, get there just as quickly, but I thought going through the front was a bit easier. But yeah, remember this pathway where when we entered it, we were basically insta-killed by Seath? There's actually a way to get past that, by the way. I think I mentioned it, but I never actually did it. But anyway, if we go in here, we meet a new friend. Hello? Hello? Huh. Well, that's interesting. We get the magic ember. Um, I think I did this wrong because Logan's supposed to be here naked and attack us. So, huh. Um, okay, give me just a second. Maybe I missed something when I was doing the my <laughs> when I was doing the um, uh, story for this. Maybe I needed to talk to him one more time before doing it because you're supposed to buy all his spells, and then he goes crazy, and we find him in here buck naked, and we fight him. So. Uh, I guess give me a second uh, and I'll uh, and I'll see if I can fix that. Give me give me a moment. All right, Logan, why haven't you moved from the spot Who yet? Are you? Stay clear. Stay clear of my work. Curses upon you. How dare you disturb me? Oh, now you're crazy. All right. Who are you? Stay cursed. No. Okay, maybe that's what's supposed cuz he's supposed to leave this spot. So, all right, let's uh try Let's try uh, resetting this place really quick. Might mean a bit of a longer episode. I do apologize. I thought I did this right, and I guess I I forgot to talk to him or reset the area, then talk to him, and say, and you basically tell he's gone mad. Basically, is what's supposed to be the case here. So, is he still there? 
Why hasn't he left yet? Maybe I need to actually leave. Okay, so um, I'll meet you back in Seath's room again uh, and see if I've uh, basically see if I've done it correctly. So I'll see you on a second. Okay, so I found out that going through the Duke Archives uh, bonfire is actually a lot quicker than going through the front. So uh, whoops, bad suggestion, I guess. Because you can just walk straight to that that elevator because you've unlocked all the shortcuts by now. So, uh, all right. Well, anyway, take two of us finding Logan here. Yeah, it's supposed to show us the surprise, and then because uh, I did it wrong, it didn't seem as surprising. But uh, be prepared for a magic spell. Yep, bare ass naked uh, Logan's here now, who's gone clearly gone bonkers. Uh, he's not too bad, but be careful. I mean, he do he still is a powerful wizard, so. Sorry, Logan. And he drops the White Dragon Breath, which is like one of the last final sorceries in the spell. If you've done everything right, this should be one of the final ones to get. The uh, achievement will probably pop up here. And you also get the Big Hat and Tin Crystalline Catalyst for killing him. I believe that's the best sorcery staff in the game, if I remember correctly. But now, if we go back to where he was, I believe we're supposed to find the rest of his equipment. Or if not there, then it's uh, then we just have to reset the area and come back here, because I believe if, after you kill him... But yeah, that's the end of his storyline. He basically just went crazy trying to repeat Seath the Scaleless' uh, experiments and basically just went bonkers because of it, so he basically went hollow, so he had to take him... Uh, whoops. Dang it! Ugh! That's where it was last time. I was hoping to just make it a smooth transition. Like I said, I do apologize. It'll be a little bit of a longer episode, but that'll uh, that'll take care of uh, um, uh, Big Hat Logan's storyline. Are you getting a uh, Are you getting a theme here, folks, about how people's stories end in Dark Souls? Usually depressing, usually sad. I think only if you do it right, only one of the stories somewhat ends up happy-ish. But yeah, if we've done everything we're supposed to do, we get Big Hat Logan's outfit and the Catalyst. Okay, sorry, that's the best Sorcerer's Staff in the game. Sorry, the Tin Catalyst ain't bad, but the Sorcerer's Staff is the best one. So before we end this episode, let's uh, read our newly acquired items, shall we? And uh, and call it that. And uh, Actually, we're pretty much near the end of the game. We've only got like a, a handful of stuff left to do. And I still can't believe I couldn't find that... Uh, Dark dra or the red dragon get him to reappear. But anyway, the tin crystal a crystalline catalyst. Catalyst imbued and terrifying crystal magic used by Lugan after his fixation on Seath. Makes all sorceries incredibly powerful, but demands extremely high intelligence from its wielder and has sorcery usages. So it's powerful, but the fact that you only get half of your uses makes it kind of hard to uh warrant it being the the catalyst to use. I, I liked using Logan's. I think it's one of the better ones overall. Catalyst of Big Hat Logan, the great sorcerer and seeker of knowledge. Originally the same catalyst employed by the Vinheim sorcerers, only terribly strengthened over time by Logan's use. Very powerful when used by one of superior intelligence. It requires 24 intelligence. The Tin Catalyst requires 32, but it halves your sorcery, so it's kind of a choice on half your sorceries and getting only a few good blasts, or Logan's Catalyst and you get some good blasts without losing too much in the way of uh, of uh, that and finally let's read Logan's uh, armor set yeah you fought we got to, we finally get to wear that big old floppy hel uh, hat of his after all this time and they say Dark Souls doesn't have some silly moments in it it, it strangely it does kind of have silly moments for being such a dark and off-putting game sometimes you know I, I'm kind of surprised how often that really occurs in this uh, this series despite uh, despite it's a uh, medieval type of uh, inspirations but uh, let's see. Ah, here we go. Big hat. Gigantic hat worn by the great sorcerer Logan. It completely hid his face, which led to his name Big Hat. Famously antisocial, Logan used it to block out noise and uh, people's stares so he could focus on his own thoughts, but it does not possess any special magical powers. Robe worn by Big Hat Logan. It is said to have been from the apprentice days at Dragon School, but it is so worn out no one knows what it originally looks like. Logan, who cared little for his appearance, no doubt ever bothered to change it. Uh, and then his boots and gloves really don't... It just says he wore it, and they're indistinguishable. So that's it for a couple of storylines. We finished off the Liar of Gwendolyn, telling, uh, giving, uh, giving us an illusion, saying we couldn't meet him face-to-face. -face. How dare he? 
And then we also finished, uh, we saw the end of Logan and his insanity and his apprentice, who unfortunately was just not strong enough to get through the fortress. So, in the next episode of Dark Souls, I'm not sure it'll be quite the end yet because we've got a few things to take care of. we got to find out what happened to that pyromancer. Got to take care of the Chaos Witch once and for all, despite being one of the friendlier ones. And what about that crossbreed lady between dragon and human? Should we leave her alone, or should we finally give her the uh, her the passive uh, the passing that she requires and the acceptance she's always wanted? Find out next time in the next episode of Dark Souls. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. And don't go holla now. You hear?